And a very good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today for our really fantastic webinar. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the travel professional community and homebasetravelagent.com, I want to welcome all of you and thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be with us today. Our host today is Scenic Cruises, and today's title is What's New for the Most All-Inclusive Luxury River Cruise Company, Scenic Cruises. Our speaker is Randy Goodrich, who is a trainer for both Scenic and Emerald Waterways and is the business development manager for agents in Idaho, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, Hawaii, Northern California, Utah, and Colorado. As always, we really appreciate the support we get from Scenic and Emerald, and so we thank you for that. Before we get started, please remember that you are all muted, but we welcome your questions. You can type in your questions at any time in the question area you see on the right-hand side of your screen. At the end of Randy's presentation, we'll get to as many questions as we can. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to Randy now so he can get started. Welcome back, Randy. Thank you very much, Sandy, and thank you uh, all the agents who have taken time out of their Day to uh, find out more about Scenic. It's, it's quite a wonderful product, uh, really designed for your clients who, who want the very best in river cruising, uh, whether they've taken a river cruise before or not. Uh, it is a, if they haven't, it's going to they're starting at the top to spoil them uh, quite well. And we'll show you today what's included with Scenic, uh, why it's special, what, what's different about it. And we'll talk about. Uh, how to book the best, most efficient way to find our inventory and, and book, and even a little bit about 2017, how you might be able to get some space for your clients ahead of, ahead of time. So uh, without further ado, we'll go into that. The new Scenic, when we talk about the new Scenic, it's not that new anymore because back in May we introduced this new brandy with just the name Scenic. The Scenic itself uh, is, is part of Scenic Tours, which is a company that started in Australia in 1986 and grew quickly to become uh, one of the largest luxury tour operators in the world, uh, serving, uh, uh, sending clients to all seven continents. Uh, they have not marketed uh, really in the United States until a couple of years ago uh, when they started expanding their cruise product. They got into the uh, river cruise business in 2008. Uh, which wasn't the greatest year in travel or to get into any kind of business, really. But uh, they decided, and they being the Moroni family, it's owned by Glenn Moroni and his wife, uh, who he started it right out of college and still is involved in the day-to-day -day operations. And known to be a very innovative uh, uh, person, as what you know, the whole brand is. We'll go through that as, as I go through the presentation. We'll mention some things that they started. One of the first things that uh, that he did when he got into the river cruise business. 2008 was to uh, design boats that had all balconies on the second and third deck. Prior to that, they didn't have that. Uh, there was a French balcony concept, but there was not uh, on the river cruise market really any ships that had all balconies on the second and third deck. So he started that up. And then I'll show you how they came back a couple years later and enhanced those balconies. So our new branding goes along with a new marketing theme uh, to take the scenic route, and the route is meant to take uh, your clients to these uh, wonderful destinations, give them every opportunity to experience the culture, history, while being uh, uh, traveling in a, in a five-star resort-type hotel uh, with all the uh, amenities, the butler service, everything included that you can think of that makes sense, uh, and that's the route. And Creating wow moments is what we call them. So uh, moments of wonder, a little bit different definition, I think, to everybody. Something very personal, but it's a moment that you you weren't really expecting, and you go, wow, you know, this is something. It it paints a picture in your brain that you'll probably have most of the rest of your life. That is one of our missions: is to create as many of those as possible while they're, while your customers are traveling. So here's a customer that sent us this picture when he woke up uh, one morning, went out on his balcony in uh, Avignon and saw the sunrise. Uh, pretty spectacular. This is actually a picture I took uh, uh, on a trip uh, last May uh, when I took my wife uh, in uh, the Netherlands and Belgium trip, which actually Sandy, we were just talking about that. She's going to take this trip next spring. It's only held in the spring when the flowers are out of the Kukunov Gardens. 
so we were having a beautiful night sitting on our balcony um, and enjoying a bottle of wine and just the ambiance, the, the scenery, watching the sunset and everything else. And then all of a sudden these fireworks went off. It happened to be May 4th, which is Remembrance Day uh, for the Netherlands when the actually Canadian troops came in and, and uh, liberated the Netherlands after World War II. So it was quite a special moment for us. There's another one a customer sent in on the, in the Moselle River Valley that, that was spectacular for them. So uh, we've talked about all-inclusive. Uh, a lot of the cruise lines say they're all-inclusive. So all-inclusive has different levels. You can be all-inclusive by uh, you know, including one tour a day, including a, some kind of red or white wine at lunch and dinner, and that could you know, define as all-inclusive. Uh, so I guess you would uh, say in the case of Scenic, we are like super all-inclusive. Uh, we include everything you can possibly think of and everything that makes sense. The only thing we don't include uh, is uh, massage and hairstyle because we just can't uh, accommodate everybody on board. We have to have a, another boat dragging behind us to take care of that additional staff we need. Uh, not everybody wants a massage or a haircut anyway. Uh, we, there is a very expensive wine list if somebody has a special occasion and wants that, but otherwise all the liquor and wine is included anytime they want it, including a mini bar in a room uh, that they can have filled up each day with whatever they want. Uh, and then there is a small gift shop, which is a few things that they could purchase. But other than that, they really can't spend any money on board. Everything I'm going to show you here today is included in the price. So uh, this is truly, truly all inclusive. Uh, try to do that. We don't want to do that. Can't do that. We have a lot of neat videos, but uh, they don't work. Up Twitter and they don't work with uh, the go-to-meeting format. So sorry about that. The uh, we call our ships spaceships, and the reason we call them spaceships is because they're more spacious. The design in general is uh, set up so that uh, it feels more spacious as soon as you walk into the ship. Uh, we have fewer cabins. Our, we have 12 ships right now in Europe. Of the 12 ships, 10 are the maximum uh, length and width, 443 feet by 40 feet. That's uh, regulated uh, because of the locks and the bridges, etc. Uh, so those are as large as any other ship out there. But the other ships have 182 to 190 some passengers, whereas we have 169. So that gives us about 10, 12 fewer cabins uh, that we have to deal with. Uh, actually, some of the cabins we give to our crew. Uh, so we have very few cabins down on the first level, which is does not have a balcony. You'll see in a minute. Uh, they're nice cabins, but we've given up some of those. At least typically, the last cabins we sell. Uh, so we have additional crew, three to one crew, uh, staff to passenger ratio. The Staterooms tend to be larger, 22% on average. We'll show you some of those. And very important, the public area, the lounge in particular, is almost 25% larger than other ships of the same size. And what that does is helps us have these six different dining choices. Now, two of those dining choices are in the main lounge area, and I'll show you those in a moment. But uh, most other cruise lines have a main dining room and perhaps a specialty restaurant. That's about it. So here are the staterooms. Uh, the lowest category is the D and E category at 160 square feet. I know on other similar size ships, uh, those categories are more than 130 square feet. They scrunch people in down there uh, as many as they can uh, because these are the lowest price cabins. But again, in our case, we sell from the top down. Uh, the big suites go first, and then these, these smaller cabins are the last things that are typically available on our sailings. And then, uh, but other than that, the, the cabins are beautiful. They're they're large enough to easily get around for two people. You've got the upper window. Uh, the water level is about halfway up that wall that you see there. Uh, but the toiletries, everything else is uh, is top of the top of the line, uh, just like all the other cabins. So the next categories will be your B through P. So these are all the balcony suites. Uh, the smaller one, which isn't that small, it's, it's larger than an industry average is 205 square feet. That's what you see in the picture here. Uh, there's a there's a deluxe 
a balcony, which is 225 square feet. And then there was the junior suites, which are 250. They all look basically like this. They're one room. Uh, the, the junior suites, the, the, typically the, the larger they are, the wider. So that, that distance between the chair and the bed is going to be wider. So the junior suites, if you have customers who are uh, mobily impaired, have to use a wheelchair walker, even a, a scooter that collapses, uh, that would be probably the best recommendation to be a junior suite or higher. The junior suites tend to be right next to the elevator, too. So we do have an elevator that goes to different floors, making it quite easy. You can see the balcony out there. I'll show you a closer picture of that in a minute, but it's, it's very unique. Uh, but easily the uh, two people out there and you know, women out there or whatever. And then the bathroom, this picture is a bathroom actually of one of our either junior or royal or royal panorama suite because it's got a bathtub in it. Uh, the other bathrooms look similar, but they only have a shower. But they're lovely. We have our own marble company in Italy that we work with exclusively to provide that beautiful marble work. And then the lower right is a picture of one of our royal suites. There are four of these on board. There's midship. Uh, they're lovely one-bedroom suites. It's got a nice sitting area. We've got the balcony on the side as well as the big window in the sitting area. Uh, and all these windows have our uh, sun lounge feature where there's actually two panels of glass that go up and down. I'll show you that. that. Right there. So this is a picture out in the balcony. Uh, and then you can see the tracking on the side of the wall here. So if it's getting chilly, what happened was we built the original ships. We had the balconies. People loved them, but it was just a railing out there. But it would get cold and chilly, uh, even wet, rainy, whatever, maybe too hot. Uh, and people wanted to enjoy the, the deck more often. So uh, they came up with this unique feature in 2012. We renovated all the ships, and since then, every ship we build has this feature uh, on the balcony uh, where you can raise and lower uh, the second panel to, to enclose it. Then it becomes what they call a sun lounge. We try to term it more sunroom or whatever. Uh, and you really don't have to uh, close the, the door to the balcony. Uh, this particular picture of the ship uh, has a, a sliding door. Um, the newer ships in the last couple of years, uh, all the new ships have a, an accordion fold. It's glass, but it folds right up. So the whole opening is is wide open when you, when you open the door. And But frankly, when I'm on board the ship, I don't have to close it because I'll close the outer window and it's a privacy, there's a curtain there. So it's quite nice. It basically becomes part of your cabin. And you can enjoy it more often, even if the weather's not so great. So this is a picture of our, our big suite. We have two Royal Panorama suites on our ships. They're uh, in the European ships. They're on the back, and the, right over the uh, back of the ship, kind of hang out in the back. And uh, it's they're just gorgeous. Now, this is a picture of the suites of the last three ships that we built. The, the Gem, which is on the Seine River, and then the Opal Jasper, which does primarily the Rhine Main Danube. Uh, these are one bedroom suites. Prior to this, the suites were just a one room suite. Absolutely gorgeous, around 360 square feet. But these new ones are 475 square feet, but a separate bedroom. So. Uh, there's nothing else like it on the rivers. You've got and also an upgraded, uh, the, the deck's a little bit larger with an upgraded uh, chair there, you can see, and the butler's serving some champagne. Always can be that. Spectacular. But these are also the hardest cabins to book, so you need to book these way out in advance. The best food is we only want the very, very best. When it comes to dining on board, we have six dining venues that I mentioned. Go through those. The crystal dining room is our primary dining room down below. And it can easily seat all 169 passengers at one seating. Uh, we're pretty lax. Uh, these people are a little dressed. Uh, they, were, they have to be in Portobello, is one of our uh, other choices for dining. Uh, but the, you don't have to really get dressed up too much. We don't have a strict dress policy on board. Uh, but uh, crystal dining room typically will open uh, at 7 p.m. or so. Until 8, 8.30, people can arrive when they want and there's ample seating. I'll go over the food in a minute. So the Portobello's is up in the lounge. So if you look at the lower right down here, this picture, that is actually a picture looking in towards the bar in the lounge. And since we include all the liquor anytime they want, the, the bar is quite large, quite popular. Uh, but it also contains two of our dining choices, 
including Portobello. So as far as you can see at the end there, that is actually the bow of the ship. Uh, during the day, that area is a nice sitting area. People will eat light lunches and read and have coffee, whatever. Uh, but in the evening, that's transformed into this Italian restaurant. Or in France, we call it L'Amour, and it's a French uh, cuisine. Five courses, lots of wine served. It's just a really enjoyable, beautiful scenery because it's all open windows all around you. Uh, so you can see how wonderful that is. You just tell your butler which night you would prefer to uh, go to that to Portobello. And this table to read, I'll show you that in a minute. That's a private table for just uh, a limited number of people on board. And River Cafe is that picture in the lower right on the right side of the main bar. Uh, it opens at 6.30 in the morning, early rise of breakfast, and then it converts into a deli all day long. So you can, people can come and go. It's meant to be light, maybe perhaps, quote, healthier foods, uh, but a lot of wraps, salads, sandwiches, usually cooking some something kind of special uh, entree of the day. But it's, uh, it's quite nice. In the afternoon, they use that for the sweets uh, with uh, the afternoon tea. And then, of course, in the evening, it reverts back to the lounge where we have music and uh, port talk, dancing, and all that good stuff going on. Al fresco dining is up on the deck. I'll show you that in a minute. And then finally, room service. Yes, every room, uh, every cabin on our ship, including the lowest price cabin, has a butler assigned. So the butler's hand are, you know, six several rooms, of course, uh, but if uh, people want to have room service, uh, the smaller cabin is a little tight for having probably dinner in there, you could, but it's a little tight. But a lot of people would have lattes in the morning, serve some, uh, some sweets or croissants or whatever, uh, but then the butler does many other things for you, uh, and we'll get into that later. So here's the crystal dining room, just a sampling of some food here. The morning breakfasts are just absolutely fabulous. Uh, you have all kinds of good stuff, including the champagne, of course. The mimosa in the morning gets you get things going. Uh, the smoothies are different every day. The fruit, and then you, you get that around to the other side, and you've got uh, the cheeses and the meats, and then all kinds of eggs and the eggs cooked to order, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I can't think of too many things that aren't available there, and they're all fresh and they're all wonderful. And then lunches, uh, lunches are buffet plus uh, some a la carte items. We do include all the wine and beer and whatever, and not just a wine or beer. You see in a minute that there's a good selection of different types. And then specialty dinners, uh, we'll bring in local local food for that area as well as you know five or six, uh, seven different items on the menu. Pretty much cover the, the whole gamut of what people like. If you have customers that have a certain diet uh, description, we have a form that you complete that ahead of time so we know that they're diabetic, they're gluten-free, or whatever it might be. We'll take care of that accordingly. This is Table of Reeve. I mentioned earlier, Table of Reeve is a, now if you've been on ocean cruises, it's similar to the captain's table. However, we don't invite the captain. <laughs> Who cares about the captain? He's going to be driving the ship. And so we, uh, uh, this is just for our people on the top deck. So, what we call the Diamond Deck, Deck 3. Uh, so if you have customers who uh, really enjoy a wine dinner, chef's dinner, that type of kind of special event, then you should recommend to them they do move up to the uh, Diamond Deck or take maybe perhaps the Junior Suite on the second deck. They will get an invitation to this. Uh, again, they, they tell the butler which night they prefer. If they're part of a group, we'll try to get them all together, of course. Uh, it's a spectacular evening. We get the guy on the right with the tie. The guy's out of place. We don't wear ties on board. Uh, but I would, I would have the coat, you know, sport coat and the shirt on, just so they know it's not required. Uh, ladies like to get dressed up for this evening as well. Uh, when we were on the ship in May, uh, we did this uh, particular dinner one of the first nights out. I think the second night, and we had uh, one of the questions I always get is nationalities. So this gives you a pretty good idea of the nationalities that are typical on board. We had a couple from Australia, we had a couple from England, we had a couple from Scotland, a couple from Canada, another couple from the United States. Uh, we had a great time. We got to know each other. We took about two and a half, three hours for dinner. Six courses. Every course they bring out a wine pairing. Explain that, and you have to have you know two or three glasses of each one of those. So by the time you get to the sixth course, uh, it's, uh, you have a pretty good time. Quite, quite an event. Very nice.
So here's our wine that we serve. So we don't just give one bottle of red or one bottle of white. Uh, and there's, there's people today uh, drink a lot of wine. They have different choices of, and preferences of what kind of red, what kind of white. So we try to cover all those. So there's six reds, six whites. There's a, there's a uh, rosé wine and a port wine there. The now fresco dining is it's pretty special. This is on uh, certain days when we're all there, uh, day at sea, so to speak, especially uh, fabulous opportunity when we're on the Rhine River and going through the Rhine Gorge uh, with this 40 capsules and about a five hour cruise. Uh, people are bending their neck looking all over the place. Uh, in our case, you've got this beautiful buffet, you have a barbecue up there, everything. You'd be sitting in these uh, very comfortable baton chairs and have a, whatever drink you want, margarita, you name it, uh, looking at the castles. And it's trying to, instead of trying to guess which, which castle is which, or try to hear a loudspeaker uh, going over, we actually have a GPS unit that will tell you which castles are which. So I'll show you more of that later. And last but not least, there's our butler service. So these people are all trained in the Netherlands. There's a university that focuses on butler service. So they know what they do, do. They're very good multitaskers. They're all busy doing something. So, uh, quite nice. Nobody else has that. So all that was really about what your clients are going to experience on the ship. Uh, the analogy I use quite often is, you know, if you're going to go to Paris, you're going to Paris to see Paris. And the choice is you can stay in a five-star hotel, four-star, three-star, whatever. Uh, but you're still going to see Paris. You're going to see the sights. In our case, our our Cove Hotel is five star on Percy, uh, better than anything out there on the rivers, but really the river cruise is about the destination. So as to having been a tour company for 30 years, luxury tour business, uh, we have a pretty good idea what people want and we want to give them, uh, people have different choices. Uh, they want to do different things. They don't want to be stuck with just one tour each day and that's it, or if they want to do more, they've got to pay more money, so they have a big bill when they check out. Uh, so this is just a sample of a small town on the Rhone River, uh, and that we have four different uh, choices for them to do. Now, it's all prepaid, so the choice is not based on cost, so the choice is based on what they would like to do. So it makes it very nice. It's very popular. We call it free choice. We've got an excellent movie on that uh, online that you can, you can Google or whatever, but it uh, explains the whole thing. Very, very nice. Uh, so in our brochure, actually, every one of the itineraries will show you what the free choices are uh, for that particular itinerary. In addition, we have Scenic and Rich. This is, these are our uh, exclusive events, uh, once-in-a-lifetime type experiences, uh, which we set up uh, typically one per week. Some, some of our 10-day cruises will have two. Uh, some will have one, but uh, it's just spectacular. So the two that are pictured here are pretty good examples. Uh, the Viennese concert, something that uh, pretty much all the cruises on the Danube will provide. Uh, some at an additional cost. I know the first cruise I went on, another, another line, uh, it was an additional cost, which that was pretty cool. Uh, we were one of several groups, so it was quite crowded, but still it's nice. Uh, but when I went with Scenic, uh, we, Scenic actually, uh, does it like nobody else. We have set up the Palais Liechtenstein. Uh, it's a private palace of the Liechtenstein royalty in downtown Vienna. Uh, we have an early dinner. We get on our buses, which we own, and then send, take you, take everybody, only our 169 passengers, over to the palace. We have a champagne reception in the beautiful uh, palace area, and then go into this, uh, the concert room and have a private concert and ballet. Spectacular. And then down below, that's uh, Palais de Pop in Avignon on the Rhone River. And we think it's the only company in the world that has the ability to have private events in the palace itself outside the French government. So it's quite something. It's a dinner and concert in that palace. Uh, the other one I can think of off the top of my head is, is in the, on the Rhine River. Uh, a lot of people will stop and, and see uh, the castle there. And in our case, we actually lease the capsule and have a medieval banquet. So things like that is what you can expect your client to experience. They're going to love it. They'll come back and tell the people about it. Hopefully, you'll generate some more business. 
I talked about the GPS unit a little bit. We call it TaylorMade. It was developed just for Scenic. Uh, it's spectacular. It's a multi-function unit. Uh, this is a picture of our latest model this year. You may have seen some presentations in the past. It was a little bit bigger. Like everything in technology, it's getting slimmer and smaller, uh, but with a lot more features. So uh, if you, if there's two of them in each cabin, so they're, they're cut clients for the whole trip. They have their own units. You don't have to rush down to the lobby and sort of get one. Uh, the units, and they take them with them. If they're on a guided tour, they can hear the guide for channel one or two, whatever. And if they want to go out on their own and do their own kind of self-guided tour, but with some help, uh, each unit will have preloaded in it uh, tours for that particular area. When we were in Amsterdam, my wife and I did the Rembrandt tour. You just you open up the, the system. You say, I want to do self-guided tours. It will list which ones are available. Click in, uh, Rembrandt. And it says, okay, walk uh, five blocks, take a ride, da, 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 da. you have the statue of Rembrandt, here's the history of them. And so it's like having a tour guide, a personal tour guide in the pocket. Uh, quite spectacular. And one of the more important items there is to help you find a ship after your tour, too. But always nice to have. Uh, you can use it either walking or on our e bikes. I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, you can also use it on board. It's got a running narrative called Riverview. Uh, so that wherever we are in the rivers, it's going to be talking about that area, telling you about it. And it might ping you that we're coming up by something. And finally, uh, you can use it uh, just to go out and wander. Now, a lot of people would like to do that and get a better feel just walking around these lovely places uh, of how people live and how, how they do business and all that good stuff. But they're quite often intimidated. They don't know the area. They don't know the language. They're afraid they're going to get lost. Uh, they're afraid they're going to miss something that's kind of cool that they didn't know about. So they can take this unit with them and walk around. And you've got the map kind of there, just like any other GPS, kind of see where you are all the time. And then if you are coming up to something uh, which we would term a point of interest, uh, it will ping and say the Church of St. Stephen's uh, is one block up on the right and uh, one block over. And you can choose to go in there and tell you the history about it or not. You want to keep going. Uh, and again, it also helps you find the ship afterwards. So it's quite, quite nice, uh, very innovative, and it's only students to have it. So the e-bikes, I mentioned those a few times. Um, so the e-bikes, we, we had bikes on board for years that people like to use. And the bikes are really nice because they enable people to go to places kind of freely. We do have some guided trips. These people are on a guided trip here, uh, but you can also take off on your own. Again, uh, people don't do that uh, for a couple reasons. One, they don't want to get lost, uh, and secondly, they may not be in the greatest shape, uh, and so they're worried they're going to get out there and not be able to get back, or they're stuck on a hill, or something like that. So we came up with the concept of e-bikes. Now, the e-bikes are still bikes. They're not electronic bikes, like a little scooter. They're bikes you still have to pedal. But instead of gears, which personally I don't ride bikes a lot, it's always a, trying to figure out the gear system is always a challenge. Well, here you just turn the, when you turn the handle instead of gearing, it actually just turns more electricity on. And uh, I kind of call them the booster bikes. It gives you a little boost. So if you're going up a hill, and these people here you see in the picture uh, are getting ready. They're in Dernstein on the Danube in the Wachau Valley, getting ready to take a 22-mile bike ride up to Mount Gabby. So uh, spectacular trip, but not everybody's going to want to do that because 22 miles can be a little daunting. But with that electricity, it makes it undaunting, it makes it quite easy, and quite enjoyable, and really kind of a bike trip of a lifetime. So more people can enjoy it. Our new logo is the word Cine for that degree sign on it. That signifies that we will be going to the nth degree to make sure your clients have a great trip. Anything we could do, we, we throw everything uh, into the hopper we can that's included, except for the massage and the haircut. Uh, so we wanted to come up with something else for 16. Uh, people quite often uh, ask about laundry servers. We always have the ship's not big enough to have a laundry on board. Uh, so we uh, we can take care of it and, and put people is at a charge, but now we're putting 16 with the concierge laundry at no charge. Uh, once a week, uh, they have it. When they get the documents from it, they do get full documents, letter, the letter pouch, 
also a backpack, and inside the backpack is a laundry bag. I fill up the laundry bag, give it to the concierge or to the butler on the designated day, uh, and it's taken care of for them. So here you can see people arriving. We do include all tips, gratuities, and transfers, by the way, uh, both on board and on tour. So let's talk about the itinerary. It's pretty normal what you see out there with everybody else. Uh, probably one of the most popular is the two-week trip uh, to Europe, and that's our terminology for that, between Amsterdam and Budapest, or vice versa. So you've got uh, three rivers and five countries you go through. Quite interesting trip to see a lot of the central part of Europe. Uh, we have an unusual trip that's two weeks to Rhine, Moselle, and Belgium. We throw Belgium in there to make it a 15-day trip. Most people, are, when they conclude Moselle, it's it's the Rhine plus the Moselle, it's a 10 day trip. So, the, just a straight Rhine trip, highlight for the Rhine, eight days between Basel, Switzerland, and Amsterdam, or vice right versa. The eight day Dutch sites indulging the lights, that's only in the spring when the flowers are full bloom at the Kukanoff Gardens, which are the largest gardens in Europe. The 7 million tulips plus orchids, everything else you can think of, spectacular. Uh, the Gems of the Danube, probably the most popular trip, especially for first time cruisers uh, who want to get a little feel for Eastern Europe. Uh, so you're basically between Nuremberg and Budapest, uh, and quite often uh, we highly recommend that people take the three day extension in Prague before or after, as long as they've gone that far. And Prague is such an integral part of the history of that part of Europe. And then you've got the Lower Danube with the 11 day Black Sea Explorer. Uh, that is uh, Budapest and Bucharest, and then the uh, Danube Delta with Vienna, 16-day uh, trip, uh, quite unusual, that's certain times of the year. So here's pictures I took uh, last May at the Kukanoff Garden. I took a lot more than that, and then my camera finally ran out of memory. In France, we uh, navigate the three rivers uh, areas of France, uh, the Seine, uh, we have a very unique itinerary, different than anybody else, where we take your customer all the way to Hanfleur, saves them about a half day in a bus. Uh, I'll show you more of that in a minute. On the Rhone River, say on and the Rhone, uh, we have both a one week and a two week itinerary. One week, pretty quick, go up and down. Uh, two weeks, more leisurely, uh, more opportunity to uh, soak up the French history as well as the huge Roman history in that area, uh, and obviously more opportunity to drink more of that great French wine that's uh, up and down that river. And then uh, new this year is the Bordeaux uh, and uh, the Dordogne River and the Garonne River. That's really about wine, cognac, things like that. So pretty spectacular. So I talked about the sand it being unusual. Our trip is 11 days. Most of the others are seven. Uh, most of the others just go out to Paris and go to Rhone or Quebec and then bus people out to the Normandy beaches so they experience that World War II uh, history there. Uh, and in our case, uh, uh, Mr. Moroni, who owns the company and makes these decisions, said, uh, let's build a ship that will get people all the way to Hunt Fleur. There's, there's a little bit of tidal influence down there. There's the lower, the, some of the locks a little smaller, some of the bridges a little shorter. So you had to build a special ship. Uh, one of the big issues is just Hunt Fleur itself. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful area, beautiful town and harbor, but it's a very small harbor, so getting a, a big long ship in there is uh, strategically very challenging. Uh, but we're able to do it, and, and the customers are right there in the middle of the action for Normandy and Hunt Fleur and that whole area that's got so much to see. So we also include a couple of days of Rhone so people can uh, get some more history, World War I history in the Somme battlefields or there's a full day cooking class, there's all kinds of things to do. So it's quite a popular itinerary. In Bordeaux, you can see the two rivers, the estuary out to the ocean. Uh, but again, really pretty heavy. It includes one night in Paris, and then you take the fast train down. I'm actually going to be leaving for that trip uh, in about 10 days with some friends. So I'm anxious to, to do that. Report back later. Also in France, on our itineraries, uh, you know, people are welcome to go shop at the chef. The chef will go out every day and find fresh produce and fresh cheeses and meat, things like that. So it's people, a lot of people enjoy doing it. For 2016, what's new? Since 15 is pretty much done. 
uh, is that we're going to add another of our beautiful new ships uh, in Europe to the Rhine Mine Danube uh, itineraries. So we'll have eight, eight ships doing that. Uh, in France, we'll retain the four ships we have currently. In Portugal, we're adding one for Doro. Of course, we have one ship, small ship in Russia, 112 passenger ship. And uh, that'll give us 14 ships in Europe. So uh, what's unique is our Doro trip, again, uh, we build a smaller ship, 96 passenger ship, uh, and we spend more time. We spend 10 nights instead of a typical seven nights that other people do, but we spend a little more time in the wine region here, um, where it's so famous, and including going up to Costa de Paco, which is where the kingdom of Portugal was founded by the original king, and we actually have a scenic and rich uh, dinner uh, up there in his house. Uh, we have a full-day excursion to Salamanca, Spain, World Heritage Site, um, which uh, with a beautiful lunch served. So we spend a couple of days up there. We're going to the Coa Valley, which is where the ancient artifacts are in that area. Our final scenic and rich dinner, we have two of them on this trip, is in Porto on a wine cave. It's pretty neat. They have a three-day extension. Lisbon is also various extensions, uh, Madrid, other things. And in fact, we're adding more of those extensions uh, kind of cruise tour packages uh, because we are a tour company too. So you'll see in our, our beautiful new brochure that there's a lot of opportunities for you to sell not just the cruise, but a cruise and an extended land uh, trip on either side of the, of the cruise. So you can do all that with one call instead of having to use several companies to get that done to the client. Quite nice. so you can see we have 10 locks. There's no cruising overnight on the door, and we're building a couple of our own docks to accommodate this longer trip. Sun deck with a pool. It's exciting venues. All the services, the you know, the tips, gratuities, the butler servers, the sun lounges, uh, for the for the decks, all all the beverages, Wi Fi, all that's included. No e bikes that's gonna stay on the city in both area. So at this time we're holding off on that. And then we're announcing uh, the Mekong. So uh, Mr. Moroni again decided it was time for something new in the Mekong. Uh, instead of the typical ship you see that's kind of wooden structure, beautiful ships, but kind of boxy and whatnot, uh, he decided to build this very yacht-looking uh, ship uh, with uh, only 34 one-bedroom suites on it. So very, very upscale. Big game changer for that for the Mekong area. Uh, the suites on this ship, by the way, are in the front here, the big ones, or a panorama. They are 660 square feet inside. There's a 200 square foot deck out here with a jacuzzi and a day bed on it. Quite spectacular. So 34 cabins, 278 feet long, all of them are one bedroom suites. Got the sun lounges, the pool, uh, spa, steam, sauna, wellness center, gym, library, open air cinema. One to one staff ratio, four dining options here, butler service, guest laundry, of course, all the beverages, all the tips, gratuity, short excursions, transfers are all included. Picture of the rendition of the pool area. This is also a dining area, it's also where the open air cinema is. Here's the dining area, it's going to look like. Here's the small cabin on board, 344 square feet. Uh, that's the bedroom, that's the sitting area with the deck, that balcony there. A little bit bigger, 430 square feet, and then you've got the big one at 660 square feet with the 200 square foot deck. Rendition of it, it's crazy, uh, just absolutely over the top. So we have inaugural sailing in January 2016. Uh, we sail both up and down the Mekong. We sail, sail between just south of just out of Ho Chi Minh City up to Siem Reap. Uh, in Cambodia. Uh, there's no overnight sailings on this trip. Uh, there's low water issues if we're June, so we don't depart then. It's a map of the area. Sometimes you can get through this lake to get up to Siem Reap, and other times we'll have to go up uh, into Cambodia and then fly your customer in. And they could spend three nights here seeing Angry Wat, all that area, or vice versa. We also have a number of extended itineraries. Uh, there's one that's uh, and this particular one is 12 days. There's one that's uh, 21 days, includes Hanoi, Halong Bay, that area. 
another one that uh, includes Laos, another one that includes Thailand. So there's some different choices. As long as people have gone that far, they would like to uh, still see more of the more of the country in that part of the world. Cindy and Rich event is the Shadow Puppets, a private performance where we get to go backstage and see how they, they do these, these wonderful puppet shows that are world famous. And we're introducing Miramar later in 2016. Uh, so the issue with uh, Mekong and Miramar for us, uh, the ship in Miramar is going to be very similar but smaller than the one in Mekong, uh, but uh, we're, we're getting quite close to being sold out already. So we'll see how that goes. It's uh, pretty close to being sold out. So talking about sold out bookings, uh, obviously, as you all know, uh, if, if your customer wants a really nice cabin on a really nice date, uh, they've got to book early. Uh, we have early booking at Denny's. Uh, we've been in place for a while, for 16, and they centered around fly-free or discounted airfare uh, choices. Um, those are all inventory controlled, so once the particular sailing starts to toe up, they will, they will take those away. So the earlier the better. Uh, we do have some single, no single supplement opportunities for next year, mainly in the spring and the fall. Uh, we do offer business class air. Our deposit policy is $500 down uh, deposit. Uh, it's a non-refundable deposit with the final payment not due until 90 days prior to departure. Uh, spectacular uh, opportunity for people to book early and uh, get the cabin they want and not have to pay the final uh, till much later and get all the, the discounts, etc. Uh, 2017, uh, you can now make uh, on request quote bookings. Uh, you're not really booking space because their space isn't in our system yet, but you're booking a request for that space. Uh, so I, I tested that. I went online, our express book, booking engine, and made a uh, supposed booking for April 2017 uh, for a specific sailing uh, for the Danube for April 2017 for a specific type of cabin, and it came back. And you know, so it looks like the booking, but it says on request. It's in our system as soon as the inventory does is loaded, which is typically in January. Uh, you'll be notified there's a $250 refundable deposit uh, due to hold that on request booking. And then at the time that you're notified, if the customer still wants to take that cabin, uh, they just simply pay the other $250 and they're locked in and the finals do 90 days. Prior to departure, if they decide they don't want to take it, they'll be refunded the $250. So you can do it online or you can call reservations and get that done. So those customers that can plan that far ahead, uh, Highly encourage you to talk to them about that and start to get those locked in for them. When it comes to more information and booking, our website is scenicusa.com. Uh, there is an agent portal button. Uh, there's a lot of information on this, the consumer side you're looking at, but the agent portal button is uh, up at the top. When you click on that, you're going to see the different uh, opportunities to get more information. Expressbooks is our booking engine. In fact, this looks different this week. They changed it. It's a, a deal uh, here where this boat is. It's now gives you the ability to sign up for Expressbooks online right there. Uh, so that's pretty cool because Expressbooks is, is more than just a booking engine. I'll show you more about that in a minute. We've got a brochure request here, our group policy. Uh, our groups uh, takes five cabins to create a group. Uh, we have some sailings that even as low as four cabins. So great opportunity for you to, to book uh, four or five couples and, and, and make a lot more money. So our sales are 14 throughout the United States. I'll show you at the end our numbers, but that's also listed right here on this page. Uh, scenic Specialist Program uh, is, uh, you take that and you actually get a bonus commission on your first booking within six months. I highly encourage you to take that before you make your next booking. Get that bonus. This just happens to be a comparison chart here, and then there's some media uh, movies, uh, videos, things like that that you can use to help uh, help sell scenic view customers. So to create a, a booking or a quote in scenic book, scenic uh, express books, uh, you simply put the tour code in. So if it's Daniel, it's N D U. It's in, it's in the brochure, uh, or you can type it all in. It'll find it for you. Put in uh, a date. And if it's uh, whatever, June of 2016, let's say, 
uh, it's going to give you a three month range. And then it's going to show you which, which uh, sailings still have availability. So you're looking at it right now by cabin type. So the first one's got a few different balcony suites available. The second one just has standard suites. You get an idea, you click on any one of those, and it's going to actually show you the deck plan. And the cabins that have white numbers are the cabins that are available. It's really nice if you have you know two, three, four different couples going. They all kind of want to be in the same area. Right then and there, you can tell them where the space is available and you know, encourage them to take the book and play right away. You can take the information on diet and mobility issues right away or get it later. It doesn't matter. Discounts are right there to, to select. And then if they're not ready to book right away, uh, you can select to create a quote. So it would send, uh, you can either send this to yourself or send it directly to your customer. And what happens is it's got the itinerary, detailed itinerary link there in the bottom, and the attachment is for the proposed uh, invoice. So they have all that information to show their family, their friends, whomever. And then if they come back, and they call you back and say, hey, we want to go ahead and book that, you simply click on the Convert to Booking button at the bottom and make the deposit, and, uh, give us all the information, personal information about them, and they're booked. Very simple. We are the most all-inclusive luxury cruise company. I do have this sheet. So you're welcome to contact me if you want to get a copy of that. Uh, just kind of a nice little cheat sheet when you're going through it to help your customers compare what they get with Scenic versus what they get with some of the other cruise lines. You'll find some of the mass market cruise lines don't, don't include a lot of this stuff, uh, whereas we do, and we're really not that much more expensive. So it's quite quite a great good value for your best customers who want the best. We have a couple sailings left in 2015. Uh, the Amsterdam Budapest uh, uh, sailing on November 9th, uh, October 19th. If they're ready to start packing now, uh, they could do the pass of Amsterdam, the Rhine River, or the Nuremberg to Amsterdam. Uh, there's an unusual schedule there uh, that's open for November 16th as well. These are the, this is the contact information for our. Uh, representatives. And uh, with that, uh, Sandy, I'm ready to take some questions. Okay, great. Thank you so much. That was, as usual, a fantastic presentation. We do have uh, a few questions, and um, the first one is from an agent who lives outside of the U.S., and he wants to know uh, how easy is it for non-English speaking passengers and even non-English speaking travel agents to deal with scenic for their bookings? And travel. Well, I don't know. Bookings are that difficult, but we only speak English on board, so that's the challenge. Okay. And um, one of our agents said you uh, mentioned something about wheelchair users in junior suites. Is the ship in general accessible for wheelchair users? And I want to add if you uh, can talk about when the ship ties up, possibly next to other riverboat. Uh, yeah, the ship, the, the, the ship itself uh, is, uh, and we have some restrictions. They have to be uh, wheelchairs or even scooters, uh, certain types that fold up. You know, we're a small ship. We don't have room for having a whole bunch of full wheelchairs standing around. But they fold up uh, so they can be uh, put away. Uh, it's a challenging situation for people that are really immobile, can't really walk. Uh, and it's not the ship that's the problem. We have elevators. The junior suites are right next to the elevator. There are plenty large enough cabins for them to get around in a wheelchair or scooter. Uh, uh, but it's getting on and off the ship. It's going to be challenging because if, if you haven't been there, the ships uh, will quite often tie up next to each other. So you're going from one ship to the next, next ship. Uh, the gang planks are very narrow. Uh, our staff would love to help, but they all pretty much typically busy doing lots of stuff. Uh, and then it's challenging once they do get ashore. Uh, it's, it's a, if you haven't been in one of those buses uh, over there, that I, I myself have to really use the handrail, pull myself up three steps. Uh, they're quite steep. Uh, the, the cobblestones, the streets, and some of the areas we go to aren't like brand new blacktop, smooth surfaces. So 
it is challenging, and in your position as their agent, uh, I just uh, encourage you to talk that through with them. We're happy as a company to try to help anywhere in any way we can, uh, but you know, it may not be the great experience if they're just really have trouble standing and walking <laughs> at all. Yeah. Okay. And I want to point out that most river boat, uh, most river boats are not particularly accessible to uh, uh, to physically challenged people in wheelchairs. Um, one of our agents said that the documents that she received didn't have um, very detailed port information or, or uh, information about enrichment tours. Is there someplace else she can go to get more detailed information on those things? Well, um, I'm not sure exactly what she's referring to. I mean, the full itinerary is, is there. Uh, in the uh, online, obviously, we have all the itineraries and what's included. The brochure has, you know, she's talking about the scenic and rich or the enrichment, uh, um, the, the number of different shore excursions each day. That's all outlined in the brochure. It's outlined in the full itinerary, which should be included in the documents. Documents you get a full leather case with the documents. Uh, it's not a, they're not e-docs or anything. You also the customer gets a backpack. Uh, gets two backpacks, one for each person, which is quite nice. You see everybody on board pretty much uses it each day when they go on tours. Okay. Um, one of our agents wants to know if Scenic has any ch um, plans to be in China at some point. Not at this point. Okay. Um, you mentioned that the deposit is non-refundable if a client has to cancel. Is any of that deposit commissionable to agents? Uh, good question. I've never had that for two years. <laughs> But, you know, in certain cases, you know, we'll be kind of flexible if something comes up and they want to rebook. I mean, that's, that's where you need to know your, your, your local regional sales manager who's from here. Uh, talk to them about it. See if there's anything we can do. You know, we're not a – we're all owned by one guy. He makes the decisions, and, you know, he wants people to be happy. So he'll do what he can. It makes sense from a business standpoint, from a customer relationship standpoint. Okay, and I also want to urge our agents, if you're dealing with um, doing research for clients, you might want to think about charging a service fee so that your time is compensated whether you get <laughs> non-refundable uh, commission uh, fees or not. Well, also insurance, too. And insurance, exactly. If somebody does a quote on a scenic cruise, about how long do you give them to uh, pay the deposit before it cancels? Well, a quote, a quote doesn't hold anything. So a quote is just uh, you're, you're selecting a cabin. You know, you might select cabin uh, 405, whatever, uh, but that's not taking it out of inventory. It's just a quote for that particular cabin. So it could be sold between the time you do that and the time the customer gets back to you. Uh, but you can go and try to find a similar cabin to see if it's available. Uh, but typically when you make a deposit uh, and you actually book the cabin, you have 48 hours to make the deposit payment. Okay, so from the time you put names in and other information, you usually have about 48 hours to put a deposit down. Correct. Okay. Um, one of our agents wants to know, is there any special pricing for travel agents? Yes, we have some FAM, uh, FAM opportunities. We have both uh, scheduled FAMs, uh, which we have one in, uh, actually we have a unique one in 1st December, which uh, on the scenic side is already sold out. Uh, uh, but it's also with our sister company, Emerald Waterways. Uh, we're actually doing uh, an agent's opportunity to see both ships. Uh, so uh, if one ship, I uh, get this right, I think the scenic ship starts in Nuremberg, the Emerald ship starts in Budapest, and they will meet, I think it's in Passau or in that area, and or actually I think it's in Milk, they meet, and they will, they will some opportunity will be there to see the other ships. Uh, even I think this is also that we have one left this morning that I heard of where you could actually uh, get on one ship and then get on the other ship. So we took we took a number, I think five cabins total, and said 
we call them a flip cabin, so we'll flip people. Uh, people. Some people that aren't scenic will get on the Emerald ship and vice versa. Like I said, I think there's one of those left this morning, uh, but there are some, uh, there are still four or five cabins left on the Emerald Van, which you also have an opportunity to see the scenic ship when they get together. Excellent. So if you're interested in any of those, you need to contact your regional manager. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Progressive sailing. <laughs> we also have, yeah, we also have independent uh, uh, fam opportunities. Uh, it's all very tightly controlled inventory management. But uh, four months out, 120 days, uh, you can check availability for sailing. Uh, if it looks like it's got reasonable availability, then again, uh, contact your, your regional manager. Let them know. Uh, the typical rate is $495 for one week sailing uh, per person, uh, plus four charges and your airfare. And it's $995 uh, for your companion unless they're travelers. Okay, two more quick questions. First one is what is your commission structure? Well, that, if you have to contact your regional manager, it it's varies by a number of factors. It starts okay. at 12 percent and goes up. Okay, and finally, can you give us just a brief outline of um, the differences between scenic and emerald? What is not included in emerald that is included in scenic, for example? Sure. So scenic is uh, is your most inclusive, and we've gone through all that uh, luxury. So for your customer comes in that really wants the best. They've been they've traveled on the region. Uh, Silver Sea, Seaborne, Crystal, stayed in the best hotels. They, you know, it's not so much price that they're concerned with. It's uh, they just want the best, and they don't want any hassles. They love having everything prepaid and just focus on having a great time. Scenic is what you want to offer them. If you have a client that's coming in that wants really nice brand new ships, because Emerald only started last year, so it's the newest river cruise company out there, and has been getting all kinds of awards. Uh, then it's really Emerald's the best value, and it's a four-star deluxe category. You call it. I, call, I call it four-star deluxe plus uh, because I think most of the other cruise lines are in the four-star deluxe category. But Emerald uh, does not exclude all the features of scenic. You know, they, they're like the others. They have uh, wine and beer at lunch and dinner, but they have a selection of different wine. They do include all tips and gratuities. Not all the other people do. They do include transfers before and after the cruise, uh, and we don't care where you buy the airfare. We do have airfare available, but we could care less, quite frankly, where you buy the airfare. We have customers get to use miles, whatever. We just want to know when they're going to arrive so we can pick them up. Uh, we also have, uh, Emerald has some extra shore excursions, not as many as Scenic, uh, but once a week, uh, once or twice a week, they'll throw in an extra, which typically you rather uh, primary four-star uh, cruise lines would uh, charge for. So there's all these little things that you have to really kind of compare. Again, I have a comparison chart. You're welcome to, to contact me by email. I had a webinar yesterday. I sent a couple of those out yesterday, this morning to people that asked for them. So this is email here, randy.bigrich at scenicusa.com, and I'll be happy to forward it to you. Great. Thank you. And on that note, I want to thank our speaker very much, Randy Goodrich, who is the uh, trainer for both Scenic and Emerald and business development manager. Randy, as always, that was really fantastic. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Sandy. And thanks to everybody who, who uh, took the time out to listen and hung in there during the whole session. Very nice. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you to all of our travel agents who joined us today. I really appreciate it. Appreciate that you were here. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.